Let's talk about roadblocks. I believe the city of Cape Town implemented a specific unit dedicated to just roadblocks. Tell us more about that. Yeah, we have a, a new senior official uh, director, Robbie, Robbie Roberts. We, um, we acquired him from SAPS, a very capable guy. He now is the director of policing and enforcement services and he is in charge of traffic law enforcement and Metro Police. Those three chiefs report to him. So he is, he came, um, he, he shares my frustration about the lack of roadblocks we've seen. We have fallen out of the habit of doing roadblocks over the years. And it's sad because there's a policing maximum that says, he who controls the roads controls crime. If you have a lot of roadblocks and you control what's happening on your roads, you control crime. If your house is burgled while you're sitting here at work, 85% of the time a road is used to transport your stolen property or the burglars to and from the property. Your crowbar gangs are working with cars, they're driving up and down roads. If we are doing effective control on the roads, a lot of other crime will be under control and we're not doing that. A key tool in doing so are roadblocks. So we've brought back a K78 roadblock unit. K78 is the form we have to get permission on to do the roadblock. So we brought back, uh, we've created a roadblock unit that will just do that and that will reinstate uh, frequent and prolific roadblocks. So this unit goes around the city in different spots for a few hours here and there, constantly just all day, every day running roadblocks. And then pulls in the local SAPs, the local law enforcement, local metro police in that area, local neighborhood watchers who work with us. Uh, and then does these roadblocks and we do them at odd places and odd hours and odd locations if people don't expect them to be. Well, I was about to say that some might view them as unnecessary or poorly executed, but some also might view them as a necessary evil. And do people you hate them when they're in peak hour. Well, as you mentioned, you have them at odd hours, but do you think roadblocks and these rolling block, um, roadblocks are effective? Yes, because you find you're dealing with traffic offenses but instead of having a camera sitting next to a road and clocking a guy doing 80 in a 60 zone or 100 in an 80 zone coming past, you're stopping people. Now you're searching the vehicle, you're finding firearms, you're finding drunk drivers, you're finding unlicensed drivers, you're finding people with outstanding warrants of arrest, you're finding people being abducted. We had an abductee the other day when we stopped the vehicle said, help, help. Um, so you're finding all kinds of other offenses in the process, you're finding firearms and drugs, uh, stolen vehicles, so a lot of other useful stuff comes out when you're actually engaging the people. Also, it's just a scene to be done. People will get a greater sense of, of, of safety seeing that these roadblocks are being done. It destabilizes your criminals because they can't predict where it will be next. Um, and yes, people inform each other, but you're, if you're alone, a group of criminals, four in a vehicle driving to somewhere, and you get caught like we did the other day with finding all the road, uh, the housebreaking equipment in the vehicle and some stolen property, then um, you know, that just takes, uh, increases your risk. So we, we are doing everything we can from our side to work with SAPs to, for, for general law enforcement, but specifically also around drunk driving and the other road-related offenses. And this unit is getting very good results, so I'll probably increase its capacity over the next few years and just multiply it. When the people become really annoyed at us, us is when we do roadblocks in peak hour, and I understand that because it slows down traffic. We try not to do that. But unfortunately, there are certain types of road users that really are only on the road during peak hour. So sometimes you have to do these operations in peak hour. For instance, scholar, scholar transport. You don't find people transporting scholars in unroad with the unsafe vehicles without driver's licenses unless you're doing it during the peak hour when scholars are transported.